Ms. Callahan, raise your right hand and take the oath, please. Do you swear the testimony you shall give in the matter now before the court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so if you got it? Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Have a seat, please, and state for the record your full name. Amanda Lee Callahan. Where do you live, Ms. Callahan? Where do I live? Where do you live? Um. Thank you, ma'am. Please answer counsel's questions. Thank you. Um, Amanda, where were you living in January of 2011? The same location. Okay, and when do you recall moving into that residence at, on Miles Road? When we bought it or completely started living there? When you started living there. May of two, uh, 2010. Um, who lived at that residence with you? My parents, my little sister, and my two little brothers and myself. Okay, and what is your little sister and little brother's names? Alana, Paul, and Chase. Okay. And um, how, how old are you right now? Currently 19. 19? Um, after moving into that residence, or let me ask you this, before moving into that residence, did you know anyone by the name of Aaron Schmidt? Yes, ma'am. And do you see any uh, that person in the courtroom today? Yes, ma'am. And if you would, please identify him by one article of clothing. A green t-shirt. Okay. And may the record reflect she has identified the defendant. And the record will so reflect. And um, how did you know Aaron Aaron Schmidt. Um, he just came over to the house one day when we were moving stuff in. Okay. So prior to moving to Miles Road, did you know him? No, ma'am. Okay. And um, how often would he visit your home? Normally every day. Okay. And about what time would he come over during the week? It's normally right after school. And um, did he get home? Do you know what time about he got home from no, school? Did he get home before or after Alana? Before. Did he ride the same bus as Alana? No, ma'am. Did he attend the same school as Alana? No, ma'am. What school did he attend? Grovetown um, High School. And what, and what school did Alana attend? Harlem Middle. How would you describe your family's relationship with Aaron Schmidt? We treated him just like he was the family. Okay. Um, it was pretty normal. Okay. And um, how many times a week do you think he came over to your house? Six to seven days a week. Okay. Um, how would you describe his relationship with Alana? The same it was with me. Um, we're all just like brother and sister. Did he ever um, did he ever talk to you about his relationship with your family? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, is January thirty first, two thousand eleven, significant to you? Yes, ma'am. And why is that date significant to you? I lost my sister and a brother. Okay. And um, earlier in the day, what were you doing that day? Sitting around the house cleaning up. Okay. And um, at what point did you come in contact with Alana? Not until 3.30 in the afternoon. Okay. And how did you come in contact with Alana? She got off the school bus. All right. And um, where was your, where did that occur? At the end of our driveway. Okay. And did you pick her up? Yes, ma'am. Was that common? Yes. And why would you pick her up at the end of the driveway? Our driveway is long. Okay. And what type of vehicle would you drive? An 01 Dodge pickup truck. What color is it? White. How long would it take you to get to the end of the driveway from your house? Roughly two to three minutes. Okay. And um, did anyone else ride the bus that you would pick up at the end of the driveway? My two little brothers, Paul and Chase. Okay. And um, what time do they get off the bus? Chase would get off around 4 and Paul would get off around 6. Okay. And what time would Alana get off the bus? 3.30. I want to ask you about um, any 
restrictions that your parents or you had placed on um, Aaron Schmidt's ability to visit your house um, during the week. Were there any restrictions? Yes, ma'am. And what were those rules? He was not allowed over during the week until after 5. And why was that? Because the boys' grades were dropping. Okay. And um, what about the week prior to um, Alana's death? Were there any specific incidents at that time? Yes, ma'am. And what happened on that time? We had found Aaron in the house with Alana with no adult home, so he was informed that he was not allowed to be there unless one of my parents or both were at the house. Okay. And uh, who confronted Aaron about that? My mom. And was she angry? No. A little, but she didn't go crazy. Was she, did she yell at him? No, she just raised her voice a little. Okay, and she ever gotten mad at him before that? No. Okay. And uh, what did he do in response to her reaction? He just left. Did he say anything? No, ma'am. Okay, so prior to that, was he allowed to um, be at the house without an adult present? He was allowed to be there if I was there. Was Alana aware of that rule as well? Yes, ma'am. What, um, did you see Aaron Schmidt on the 31st of January, 2011? Yes, ma'am. And where was the first time you came in contact with him that day? At the end of my driveway when I was waiting for Alana to get off the bus. Okay, and what was he doing? He just walked down there to tell me he wasn't allowed to come over for the next two weeks. Okay, do you, was he on foot? Yes. Okay, uh, and what did he do after he told you? He started walk back towards his house. Okay, so he specifically came down there for that only reason. Yes. Walked directly to you and turned around and went back towards his house. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And how would um, Aaron Schmidt come to your house? He would normally go through the woods between our houses. Okay, and yes, yes, ma'am. And may I have the witness step down just to put these rooms away? You might need to stand back, stand back, like right here. Can you use this? Just so um, if this is your house, mm -hmm. where would um, the defendant come from? <laughs> if this is Miles Road right here, uh -huh. and this is the end of your driveway, where would he be coming from? He would normally come through the woods right here. Okay, is there like a footpath through there? And there's a vehicle path. Okay, and um, can you just point exactly like where the path starts from, from his house. From his house would be roughly around the backyard. Okay, and from then? Going through. Okay, and so this is actually the back of your house. Yes. Okay. And where would you pick Alana and Chase from, up from? Down at the driveway. Okay, and so when you saw the defendant on the 31st, which direction did he start walking back? This way. Okay, and um, let's see. Just hold tight for just a second. After you pick um, Alana up, or about how much time passed after the defendant walks away and Alana actually arrives off the bus? Seconds. Okay. And um, what do you do once you once Alana gets off the bus? I took her back down to the house, and we watched TV, and she got on the computer. Okay. Do you know what she was doing on the computer? Putting pictures up from her weekend with her friends on Facebook. Okay. And where is the computer located, uh, or where was it located at that time? Beside the sliding back door. Okay. And... Um, how long, or do you know how long you would have waited at the house before leaving to pick up Chase? Roughly 20 minutes. Okay. 
at any point um, during that time, once you arrived back at the home, did you encounter the defendant? No. Okay. And at what point do you leave to go get Chase? Do you recall what time or approximately what time that would have been? No, no. Okay. And when you get to the end of the driveway, um, is Chase there yet? Yes. And was he, uh, was the bus there? Uh, it was starting to pull away when he got off it and okay. I got there. And um, how long would it, how long would you estimate the time frame to be from the time that you left your home and actually arrived to where Chase was? Two minutes. Okay. And uh, did you immediately return to the home? Yes. And how long did that, that take? About two minutes. Okay. And when you arrive at the home, where do you park your vehicle? In front of the house. Okay, and, and, and so, um, and what vehicle is this? The is this Dodge pickup. Same one that you picked um, Alana up in? And what door do you go in? The front. Do you uh, notice anything out of place? I noticed they're in shoes first. Okay, and when you, um, did you see Alana's shoes? Yes. And uh, which shoes were closest to the door? Aaron's. Okay, so um, was this common for y'all to remo remove your shoes prior to taking? Yes, ma'am. Prior to entering the home? Okay, so both Alana's shoes and Aaron's shoes are there. Okay, did you see Aaron? No, ma'am. Um, at what point do you come in contact with Aaron? When I was closing the back sliding door, he had come in the front. Okay, and did you notice anything out of place uh, around the computer? Yes. What was out of place? The computer chair had been knocked over, and there was stuff all over the carpet. Okay, and did you know what that was? Not at the moment, no ma'am. Okay, what, if anything, um, well, let me ask you this. Did you come to find out what it was? Yes, ma'am. What was it? It was Alana's blood. Okay. And um, what, if anything, did the defendant say to you when he came through the front door? He had said, oh, my God, someone took Alana, and I don't know what to do. Okay. Did he indicate whether or not he had actually seen this person? He had told me he had saw someone running through the woods. Okay. And did you see anyone running through the woods? No, ma'am. Um, what happens after, after that, after he tells you that? Uh, we all left out the front door. After he slid his shoes back on, we ran out the front door to go try to find Alana. Okay. And what direction did you go in? The backyard. Okay. Were you on foot? No, ma'am. And how were you back there? I was in the pickup truck. Okay. And um, who got to the backyard first? Aaron. And what? once you come back around to the back of your home, which direction did he go in? He was off to the right in the woods. To, to the what direction? Off to the right. Okay. And um, what happened after that? He had told me he saw Alana's body, and I had asked him where. He pointed into the direction which he saw her, and we all ran over to where she was. Okay. And at any point, um, did, the did you see the defendant get close to her body prior to telling you where she was? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Do I? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what was he? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear that response. Yes, ma'am. How close did he get to her? Close enough to touch her. Well, I'm talking about before he, like when he tells you, I see her, where is he standing at that point? On the other side of my truck, closest to the wood line, away from the body. Okay. So, um, well, uh, if you could estimate in feet about how far this is. A good bit. I, Over 50 feet? Probably. Okay. So, looking at things as they are right now, would he have been able to see her body from where he was standing when he told you that? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, did he go near her body before or after you got to her? After. Okay. And what was his demeanor at that point? He had helped pull a, tried to pull a stick out of her hair, and then he started freaking out, saying, oh, my God, now my prints are on her and they're gonna think I killed her. Okay. So he's not crying about Alana's condition. No. 
Is there any conversation at that point uh, between you and the defendant? I just told him to leave the stick alone, not to touch it again, and I just needed him and Chase to stay close to me at that time because I believe there was someone in the woods that just randomly killed my sister. Okay, and is that because the defendant told you that? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, do you recall what the weather was like that day? Chilly. Okay. And where was Chase while all this is going on? He was beside me. About how far away from you is he? I could reach my arm out and touch him. Okay. Um, who calls 911? I did. And um, do you end up touching Alana? Yes. And uh, why do you touch Alana? To do CPR and wipe the blood away from her face to see if she was still breathing. Okay. And was she breathing? A little. Okay. And um, were you able to to revive her? No, ma'am. And um, where? How, how much blood are we talking about at this point? A good bit. Okay. Was there was there blood in her mouth? Yes. What about anywhere else? Around her nose, her eyes, and on the ground beside her. Okay. Were you able to determine at that point how she had gotten into that condition? No, ma'am. Um, at any point during this call that you made to 911, does the um, defendant get on the phone? Yes, ma'am. And why does he get on the phone? Because I was getting frustrated with dispatch. Okay, and why are you getting frustrated? Because I couldn't listen to her and try to revive Alana at the same time. Okay. Um, did you get any, any blood on you? Yes, ma'am. And um, after officers are, arrive at the location, where do you and Chase and the defendant go? We were moved to the front yard, and me and Chase were put on the front porch, and Aaron was sitting on the back of an ambulance. Okay. And um, at what point do you leave your residence? After they had, fig they had covered her up and said that she was probably gone. Okay. And... Um, after you leave your residence, do you speak with investigator Jimmy Emmons from the uh, Columbia County Sheriff's Office? Yes, ma'am. And at that point, um, are you allowed to wash your hands? No, ma'am. So you still have Alana's blood on your hands when you're interviewed, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, what was the demeanor of the officers at that point? I at first thought that they were accusing me of doing that to my sister. So they're questioning you as, as if, if yes. you, you could have been a suspect at that point. Okay. And um, at any point during the conversation that you have with Investigator Evans, um, do you have any thoughts in your mind that the, the defendant was actually responsible? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, did you think at that point that he was capable of doing something like that? No, ma'am. All right. Did... Alana have um, keys to the house? Yes, ma'am. And did she keep them on a keychain? She usually kept them in her purse. Okay, and how many keys did she have? One to the house, our house in Harlem, and one to her grandmother's house in Martinez. Okay, and um, on the date that Alana was killed, did she have those keys? No, ma'am. And how do you know that she didn't have them? She had told me and my mother that she had lost her keys. And do you know about how much longer before she was killed that she had lost them? I can't recall. I mean, was it more than a month or less than a month? Less. Okay. And did you ever find these keys? Yes, ma'am. Where did you find the keys? I found them on the driver's side floor of my dad's truck. Okay. And where were they? They were underneath all the mats. Okay. Uh, and are you talking about the white 2001 Dodge pickup? Okay. And um, when did you find the keys? couple weeks later okay and um, at any point during this whole ordeal does the defendant have any opportunity to access that truck yes ma'am and at what point was that when I was on the phone with 911 I had told him to go turn the truck off okay and uh, was there anything notable about the keys they did have a color ring on her house key for our house but at the time that I found them, they were just plain silver keys. Okay. 
Um, did your either of your parents keep um, firearms in your house? Yes, ma'am. And what were the rules with respect to um, any of the children accessing those firearms? They were not allowed to unless my dad was at the house. Okay. And was your dad at the home that day? The 31st. On the 31st? No, ma'am. And where was he? He was in Massachusetts. Okay. How long had he been gone? About a week. And what about access to your parents' bedroom? Was that allowed? No, ma'am. And um, did your parents keep their bedroom door open or shut? It was normally closed. Okay. Unless they were home. Was it normal for you to arrive back at your home with Chase and find the defendant in your home? No, ma'am. How many occasions would you say that that had ever happened before? Maybe twice. Okay. And did he ever get in trouble on those occasions? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, up until the week prior, um, had the defendant ever gotten in trouble with your parents? Yes, ma'am. For what? He was in our house when Alana had come home from school. And that, it's scared. That's the week prior, though, yes. right? But prior to that specific incident, when he was in trouble with your parents on that day for being home and when Alana was there, had he ever been in trouble before that? No. Okay. So that was the first time he had been in trouble with your yes. parents. And it was for being at the house without a parent with Alana. Um, at any point during um, the time that you find Alana and are waiting for the officers to get there, do you ever observe the defendant uh, to go back inside of your house? No, ma'am. Did you ever observe him um, to wash his hands? No, ma'am. Okay. Could he have washed his hands? No, ma'am. Okay. If I could just have one second here. Your Honor, I have no further questions to this one. Is Ms. Docker or Thank you, Ms. Stonecar. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Callahan. Um, to clarify a few things, Aaron came around pretty much the same time every day, and he knew the bus schedules pretty well. He knew all everyone's schedule, and he knew that you. it only took you a couple minutes to go from the base of the driveway up to the top of the house. Um and during the time that, uh, so Alana, Chase, and Paul are all dropped off in pretty quick succession. Yes, ma'am. And so typically during the afternoon when you're picking them up from school, uh, you're either typically in the house or down at the bus stop. Yes, ma'am. Is that right? Okay. Um, and prior to this incident, Aaron had never gotten in trouble um, for any kind of aggression or hurting any of y'all. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Um, and you stated that your mother was only a little bit angry about the incident that happened the week before. Mm -hmm. um, that she didn't yell. She raised her voice. Uh, and that Aaron uh, left without really any attitude or anything. He just went home. Yes. Okay. And when you came in that afternoon, Aaron's shoes were by the door. Yes. And they were, they were just, were they neatly placed? Was there anything... They odd was, about them? They were just neatly placed beside Alana's shoes. Okay. Where they would be any other day. Yes. And <clears throat> Aaron Aaron loved you guys. He expressed his his adoration for your family. Yes. Uh, and he treated Alana and you like sisters and considered you all sisters. Yes. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, I jotted down a note. When you had stated uh, January 31st, I think you stated that was the day you lost both a sister and a brother. Yes. And that's because you considered Aaron like a brother in your family. Um, uh, no further questions for this witness, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Callahan. Thank you. Ms. Payne? Your Honor, I have no further questions at this witness. Thank you. You can sit down. You might remain in the courtroom if you like. All right, any issues we need to take up before we bring the jury in? Is the jury all back there yet? Okay, we're we'll waiting for a couple of jurors. Your Honor, there is an issue that um, 
that we wanted to take up about the photos that I had mentioned before trial yesterday, and then Miss. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I do you have, do you have the, do you have the, we he, need your, we need your client. Up. Let's get your client in here. Y'all want to take that up now? Yes. I mean, I, I think that would be okay, the that'd best be fine. time. That'd be fine. Let the record reflect that Mr. Schmidt is back in the courtroom, as is his counsel, and uh, the state's counsel is present. So we're back in session, and... Um, Ms. Duncar, you wanted to renew a motion you made yesterday? Yes, sir. Um, regarding the photos, there are um, about 10, I believe, that are going to be introduced today. No, eight-ish, <coughs> that we would object to being introduced. Um, there are a number of, of the victim at the scene. Um, it is after the CPR has been attempted, um, so they do not show the an accurate depiction of what the body was like when she was first found by Ms. Callahan. Um, and Mr. Schmidt, and so we would object to those being uh, admitted. They are particularly gruesome, and uh, there are about, I think, eight photos that show approximately the same thing. Um, so in the alternative, if all eight are not going to be excluded, we would ask that um, it not, not all eight not be admitted. All right, thank you. Ms. Payne? Now, are the specific exhibits to which she is object uh, objecting to is 156 through 164. Um, these are photographs, each individually depicting something uh, different than the next photograph, including a couple of the photographs, which is, uh, which is the uh, victim leaned over to one side. They picked her body up to one side to uh, photograph what is up, up underneath her before the body is moved from the crime scene. Um, in addition, Your Honor, I just would uh, argue that this is the condition that the victim was found in as a result of the defendant's conduct, which is, so we don't have any control over the fact that they, I mean, you know, CPR was administered, they were trying to bring her back to life, and this is the condition in which the crime scene, you know, found her in, and this is where they, they base their premise off of. I don't think that they're cumulative evidence. I think each one is mutually exclusive from the other, and that they should all be admitted. Yes, please. Yes, sir. May I approach? Yes, ma'am. How long for you intend to present this uh, with your first witness this morning? It'll be my second witness this morning. Might, uh, some of the photographs, um, would you, how do y'all want to handle this? Y'all want to handle this at, ben, at, at the bench? You comfortable with that? Incidentally, the sidebar conference is not for the purpose of keeping anybody from hearing what's being said. It's, it's just because we're looking at some photographs that are not being published yet. Do, with, do you withdraw your objection as to the other photographs, or are you, you, you don't have to? We, we would leave that objection standing. That'd be fine. That's fine. You might renew the objection at such times as, as the exhibits are, or um, they seek to admit the exhibits. Thank you. All righty. We have all our jurors yet? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, we have a bailiff. Who, my new bailiffs have not been sworn, both you guys. I just asked that uh, initially y'all have no contact with the jury until y'all are sworn, okay? Thank you. If, if all the jurors are present, let's bring them in. Rachel Huffman. And where do you live, Ms. Huffman? Uh, just whatever you do live in. In Martinez. That's fine. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Ms. Huffman, uh, where are you employed? Columbia County Sheriff's Office. And how are you employed at the sheriff's office? I'm a dispatcher. Were you employed as a dispatcher with the sheriff's office on January 31st, 2011? Yes, I was. And uh, were you working uh, at approximately 4 p.m. on that date? Yes. Do you recall um, taking a, a call referring to an incident at 1159 Miles Road? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, Your Honor, at this time, uh, the state would seek to admit by st stipulation states exhibit number one, which is a recorded uh, version of that 911 call. Thank you. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. It's admitted pursuant to the stipulation.
Hello, honey, it's Rachel Paul. Yes, this is Rachel with the Columbia County Sheriff's Office. Hey, let me get you an operator, ma'am. Just a moment. Please. Okay, thanks. This is Operator 31. Thanks for holding. How can I help you? Yes, this is Rachel with the Columbia County Sheriff's Office. Yes, ma'am. Y'all called in alarm at 521 Adams Mill Lane. Hold on one second. 521? Yes. And do you know the Bass family account? Bailey. Okay, how can I help you with this account? Um, we're needing proper party to respond. Okay, is there a reason why? Uh, unsecured door. I'm sorry, can you hold on? Uh huh. Tony K9, where's your emergency? No, oh my God, I'm going to stand. Ma'am, where are you at? What's the address on Miles Road? 1159. 1159 Miles Road? Yes. What's going on? I don't know. I'm not going to go to my brother. I'm not going to go to my brother. Okay. Calm down, okay? Tell me what's going on. I'm going to go to my brother. I'm going to go to my brother. And what's your name in the water? Ma'am, you have to take a deep breath for me and tell me what happened. Uh, I don't know, gotcha. I went to bring my little brother from the driveway. I come back and this red stuff all over my playground. And I found her in the woods. You found who in the woods? My sister. Okay. What happened to her? I don't know. She was on Facebook and I mean she was out here looking and she was jumping around covered in blood. Did someone get in a fight with her? Someone tried to kill her. Are they there now? Oh no, they like took off. Do you know who they look like? No, I don't know who it was. I got in the truck to come find her and I found her right here. How old is how old is she? Is she talking to you? No. She's not talking to you? No, we're not even talking about her. She's not talking about her. And what's her name? Alana. A-L-A-N-A. Alana, can you hear me? Alana? Alana, move your fingers. Does it look like... Do you know what she was hurt with, or was it? No, it had like a hole in her, her chin, where, where she was like, hit something, and I moved. There's a hole in her chin? Yes. Do you know who the people were? No, I don't know who the people You didn't see what kind of car, or who they, what they look like? No, they were in the woods somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. I'm going to talk about gravity and lock the door. Hello, honey, it's Rachel with the Columbia County Sheriff's Office. Yes, this is Rachel with the Columbia County Sheriff's Office. I'm on foot. I'm looking at my house. I can see my house. I'm on foot. What kind of car is in your driveway? I have a 2003 Dodge. What color is it? White. Is she talking to you yet? Or? No, she won't. Is she breathing? No. No, she's not breathing? No. <laughs> okay, hold on one second. Cold Cross had a lady on the phone that needs CPR instructions for her sister. It's at Miles Road. I believe you're already notified. Yeah. What's going on? Me. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I wanted to show you my brother right now. I 
I got mad at her. She was dead. I got her in the woods. Her baby. I want to get her. Okay. Her baby. 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 Her Okay, I need you to wipe away as much of the blood as you can, okay? Oh, I don't think you Okay. Ma'am. Right. Okay, I need you to wipe her blood away from her mouth and nose. Oh, my God, I'm so sick. Ma'am, how did she get all bloody? Do you know? I don't know. It looks like you were dealing with something. Looks like what? She beat on something. Hit with something? She looks like she was beat. Beat? Yes. Oh my god, I'm going out of her mouth. I can't do this. Oh my god, I'm out of her mouth. Did you hear anything or a car or anything? 
Is that a um, complete uh, recording of that phone conversation that you had that day? Yes, ma'am. Does it appear to be altered in any way, shape, or form? No, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Your Honor, I have no further questions of this witness. Ms. Duncan, any questions? This one, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Huffman, when speaking to Aaron Schmidt, he was not calm, was he? No, he wasn't. No further questions, Your Honor. Anything further? No. Thank you, ma'am. You can step down. Ken Summers, I'm Sergeant with Columbia County Sheriff's Office, Crime Scene Investigations. Thank you, sir. Please answer counsel's questions, Madam DA. Thank you. Um, Sergeant, how long have you been in Crime Scene Investigation? Uh, I've been with the Sheriff's Office for about 19 years. Before that, I worked in military police investigations, did some crime scene there. Uh, my 19 years with the Sheriff's Office, I've been in investigations, doing crime scenes of some sort for 16 to 17 years. Okay. And as um, you are assigned to that specific division, what are the uh, main responsibilities that you have in that division? Um, with our division, we process evidence, uh, collect evidence, process crime scenes, um, do re crime scene reconstruction, that type of thing. Okay. Um, were you employed with the Crime Scene Investigation Division on January 31st, 2011? Yes, ma'am, I was. Did you have the occasion to become involved in the investigation of the murder of Alana Callahan? Yes, ma'am, I did. And uh, do you recall when you would have been dispatched to the scene? Um, around, um, on January 31st, around 1626 is when I arrived at the scene. Okay, and what is that in layman's terms? About 426, 430 in the afternoon. When you first arrive on scene, what uh, what do you observe initially? Well, when I first respond, when I first arrived, I know that deputies had begun securing the crime scene, um, using crime scene tape, control access, um, and we're securing the scene. Okay. Um, at that point, did you enter the home? No, ma'am. We um, began. I began with um, the exterior crime scene where I was advised that the body was and that area. Okay. Um, ultimately, did you ever enter the home? Yes, ma'am. Later that evening after we obtained the search warrant, we entered the residence. And I was actually one of the first two people into the residence to secure to make sure there was no one else in there. Okay. And is that entry um, documented? Yes, ma'am. Um, when I um, began processing the scene, the first thing I did was begin videotaping the exterior scene. And then um, after that, we began processing. We entered the residence. After I first entered, we cleared it, and then I began videotaping the inside of the residence. Okay. And was that uh, video put into evidence? Yes, ma'am, it was. Okay. Um, Your Honor, this time the state would seek to admit by stipulation state's exhibit number two, which is the crime scene video. Is that correct, Ms. Duncar? Yes, Your Honor. Exhibit two is admitted pursuant to the stipulation.
Over here, where this blue, why just put that little blue marker? There. Okay, this is um, it's basically facing south from the path, and that's the driveway coming up to the residence and area. There's a little area over there. If you would use your finger to illustrate where the basically where the driveway touch the screen, so that it'll... there's the, this whole area. There's a road that comes up this way. Sorry, a little bit lower than that, but comes up this way, lean up. You can see the, the cars that were there in the crime scene tape, and there's actually a, a, a open area there. Okay. Off the road. And is that crime scene tape right below those blue marks? Yes, that's crime scene tape. So, are you where are you standing in relation to the body? I'm near the feet of the body. Okay. I've actually worked my way. I'm, I'm going to correct that. I'd worked my way out to the entrance to the, the path. So a number of feet further down from the body, basically facing back house. toward the house. Okay. And the DA you the screen?
that arrived. straight ahead. as we enter the residence. From which door? From the um, front door. Would this be the residence the same way that you would have found it? Yes, at this point, the um, myself and one of the investigator had made entry through a um, unlocked window, um, had gone in and just walked through to verify that there was no one else in there and then went back and I opened the door and began videotaping. Do you know whose bedroom this is? At the time? Uh, I did not. Um, no, ma'am. And why are you videotaping this bedroom? Um, we videotaped the entire residence because we don't know all the involvement at that point. We're in initial stages of processing the crime scene, so we videotape everything for documentation. And what is that? It's a um, live Oh, it's a um, round a casing from one of the bedrooms. Was it of any significance in this investigation? No, ma'am.
That's the one right off the um, dining room. There was a uh, thing on the door with um, Alana's name on it. That's the one that was directly off the dining room. I didn't. Oh, that was the... Okay, I'm sorry. That's the master bedroom. I'm sorry. Let's see where I'm at. What are you doing at this point? We're just checking locations, um, like trash cans, um, on videotape and washer and dryer, make sure the clothes are in there being washed or anything. Or been thrown in there. Is this the same day? No, I mean, this is the um, the next day in the morning. We came back out to the scene after having it secured all evening. Is anyone moved the truck from its original location? No, ma'am. Is that <coughs> is that the truck that the sister? Was yes, in? As, yeah, as I was advised, that was a truck she pulled up in. And what are you looking at now? I'm showing the area of the path um, straight ahead is where the body was. Down that path right there. <coughs> I'm trying to orient in where the vehicle and everything was at that time. Is, is the area where the body was marked in any way? There were um, some um, evidence flags that were in there, but it's straight ahead. Is that what this is right here? Yes, ma'am, it appears to be so. vehicle and then there's a the uh, location that we uh, located the firearm in the woods we had put a uh, another evidence flag there to give us an indication of where it was where we found it and actually marked inside where it was found with some more that, evidence flags. this right here yeah that's the one along the path okay. just showing us the direction of where we were going What are you looking at now? I'm zooming into the area. There's another flag right there, right in the center of the screen. That's where the uh, firearm was found.
Now we're in here. I'm showing the back toward the truck. I'm going back. from the path of the truck is to the where the um, the line's body had been including where we had marked the flags and again documenting the, the track the drag marks to the yard Is the truck still in the same location? Yes, ma'am. So you can't even see the truck? Yes, ma'am. Sergeant, what was the purpose of the last good, you know, videotaping of the, of the house? Um, we try to go back through the residence before we leave in case anything has changed. Also, for any damage, we have people who complain that we've gone in, torn down walls and things after we left. So we do it also as documentation for our protection, of what the condition was when we released the property. Um, do you memorialize this um, in any other way other than a videotape? Yes, ma'am. We take uh, phot photographs and we make documentation, notes, diagrams, things like that. Is this um, the photographs done before or after the evidence is collected from the location? Before and in many cases after. But we document the evidence before it's moved. Okay. Um, have you had any specialized training in crime scene investigation? Yes, ma'am. And what type of training have you had? Okay, um, let's say investigations training in the military. Um, um, went through crime scene investigation school back in 1996. Um, in 99, I became a member of the Georgia International Association for Identification, which is crime scene. Um, 1999, uh, shooting incident reconstruction. Um, 2000 and 2004, blood pattern analysis and reconstruction. Um, in 2001, I got my identification certification from the state of Georgia, which included um, crime scene class, latent print development, um, the le two parts of the FBI class, the latent print identification and latent print classification, along with some other, and um, maintain training through uh, various international association, regional offices through Georgia, Florida, and Mississippi. Okay. Um, have you ever been qualified before um, as an expert in crime scene investigation? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Your Honor, at this time, the state would seek to admit Sergeant Summers' testimony um, as that of a crime scene uh, investigator expert. Ms. John Carl, for Dyer? Um, no, Your Honor. Any objection? You might so testify. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> investigator, I'm showing you what's been previously marked as case exhibit 29 through 92 inclusive, and I'm just going to ask you to just look through those and tell me if you identify or if you recognize them. Yes, ma'am, I'm familiar with these. And what are those uh, photographs of? These are photographs of the um, various locations within the residence and the crime scene. Do they depict, depict a fair and accurate rep representation of the crime scene, as you recall it? Yes, ma'am, they do. Thank you. Your Honor, at this time, the state would seek to admit states of 29 through 92. Any objection? Yes, sir, Your Honor. Thank you. They're admitted without objection. Get 
just mm-hmm. like, briefly. Can we get the lights? Can we get the lights? This is State's Exhibit 29. Um, Your Honor, maybe we have the lights. Just in. And I realize this is somewhat dark, but what is this picture? Um, that's a photograph from basically just inside the front door um, with the living room area and what the dining, I mean, the, the den area or the kitchen eating area and the back door in the back. Okay, and this is State's Exhibit 29 for the record, but is this, um, can you tell at which point this is this photograph is taken? In other words, before or after evidence? This was um, before any evidence was collected. We came in, videotaped, and then I began shooting photo- Then we began shooting photographs. Okay. State's Exhibit 30. What is this? That's a photograph from the edge of the kitchen dinette area back toward the front door. States Exhibit 34. What is this? That's a just a photograph of the kitchen area. Okay. Facing to the north, the window would be facing into the backyard. Okay. This window right here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and what is this? There's a... Um, a Dishcloth or washcloth, um, kitchen wash dish, dish towel that was sitting on the counter. And when you initially began videotaping and taking photographs, do you have any information at that point specifically um, about perhaps who committed the crime? At the, when we first began videotaping, no, ma'am. Okay. No, we first began. Okay. And um, as you are at the crime scene, does the information that you have um, change? Yes, ma'am. Um, throughout the processing of the crime scene, videotape, photographs, and other search evidence collection, I'm in constant contact with the um, the investigators and Sergeant Douglas who, and Investigator Edmonds who are relaying information to me of what was coming from interviews from various parties. Okay. And were they at the crime scene at this point? No, ma'am. States Exhibit 36. Yeah, that's just a close-up of the the dish towel. And why did you ultimately take additional pictures of that dish towel? During the investigation, I was advised that um, that Mr. Schmidt had said that um, he had washed his hands with the towel, and that towel was sitting right beside the kitchen sink. State's Exhibit Number Thirty Nine. That's a photograph of the master bedroom um, from just inside the doorway in front of the dresser. What is that? There's a there was a a long gun in that corner. Okay. Rifle. And whose bedroom is this? This was the master bedroom, the parents' bedroom. Showing you state's exhibit number 43. What is this? That's, is that in focus? I guess it's because it's going to... That's a <laughs> photograph of the um, kitchen area where the computer was. The back door is to the right over here, uh, the glass door, and this is uh, the computer desk and the chair turned over. Okay, is that the same way that you found it yes, immediately ma'am. upon entry? State's Exhibit 44. What is this area? That's the little kitchen eating area um, with the wraparound seating. It's um, just behind the computer. There's the, at the top of the screen is the um, rear door. Okay. And 
States Exhibit Number Forty Five. All right, just one second. It's just um, a photograph of the eating area and the chair with the back door showing relationship between where the, the chair was on the ground and those tables and seating was. Exhibit number 46. What is this? Okay, that is a um, more of an establishing shot of the seating area to the east. Um, and there's a box, looks a uh, child's um, school project, it appeared, with a, um, and inside of there is where we found the casing. We found a nine millimeter casing. You're speaking of. Where, where exactly in the box did you find? I apologize, you can't see this very well. <laughs> You have the other photograph of them. Thank you. Just one second. 47. This is Jason's exhibit 47. Can you point to it? Okay. It's right there at the, okay. the bottom of the bottom right of the photograph. Okay. And do you have any experience with um, semi automatic handguns? Yes, ma'am. And um, if it's not a revolver if it's a semi-automatic what what happens to the casing after it, after it is ejected um well, it's depending on the type of weapon but it's ejected normally to the right or to the rear and right okay and would the placement of this casing in this particular location um be consistent with a semi-automatic firearm being fired in that area yes ma'am Did you collect that item? Yes, ma'am. And um, what did you do with it? Um, when we photographed it, documented it, it was submitted to the uh, GBI crime lab for comparison to the firearm we laid recovered and the projectile. Okay. Your Honor, may I approach a witness? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's from previously marked the state's exhibit number 211. And uh, do you recognize that object? Yes, ma'am. This is the uh, casing which we were speaking about. Um, it's got my markings and my initials and on it. Okay. Your Honor, at this time we would just seek to admit states exhibit number 211. Any objection? No, sir. Okay. State 211 is admitted. And may I, may I open the we just, um, just momentarily. <clears throat> Still sealed up. Mm -hmm. Yes, man, it's the casing that was. Okay. And what do you do with that? With that casing? Um, like I said we was photographed and it was turned over to the crime lab for them to do um, firearms comparison to. Um, a, a fire, specifically in this case, a specific firearm we had located. And what what crime lab are you speaking of? Uh, the GBI crime lab, the GBI Department of Forensic Sciences. Publishes to the jury about virtue of just letting them open. Yes, ma'am. This is state's exhibit number 52. 
What is this? That is the um, the computer that was on the computer desk there. Um, when we arrived, the computer had gone into standby mode, so I um, just barely moved the mouse, and the screen came up, and I photographed the screen at that time. Okay, and what was on the screen? There was um, a, a Facebook page and a, um, a file had been opened of photographs. It said, my documents, photographs. I had documented my son if you'd like to add the directory information. Let's see. Connected to the internet um, on her Facebook page, Alana Callahan's Facebook page. There's another active window, window labeled Kids, My Pictures, Alana's Pics. I'm um, your honor, maybe dim lights. Sorry. Well, I'll wait. Actually, I'll wait a few minutes until you finish that. All right. While we're waiting, um, explain what the difference is between a casing, a projectile, and a fragment. Okay. The casing um, is the part that contains the, the projectile or the bullet, the part the bullet or projectile is the part that comes out. Um, the casing normally includes the primer um, and the powder. Um, so you'll have, and basically you have the casing which contains the projectile, and the weapon is fired. The primer goes off, sets off the powder, which forces the projectile, propels the projectile out. Um, in any case, you'll have fragments of a projectile, or if there's a a round that has um, like a covering or anything on it, that may separate into a, a um, as part of a fragment, not a complete intact projectile. So a fragment comes from the projectile, which comes from inside yes, the casing. Ma'am. And um, yeah, may we kill the lights? What is this? Okay. This is state exhibit number fifty-five. But that's the um, computer, the, the keyboard tray. Um, on the computer desk with the keyboard, the mouse, and there is a, a fragment that uh, we also list as part of the jacketing. It's a part of a jacket around it, separated from the projectile. And it is right, I can't mark it with it, right around there. This is about 56. So, is that the, let me see, I got, I've got to see better than that. <laughs> it's, it apparently has a mind of its own. Can I see the original photograph for just a moment? Because mm-hmm. I. If I could, can I see that one? Yeah. Please, ma'am. Um, I'm fine, Your Honor. I don't want to. Okay, yeah, that's. Okay, yeah. That's the um, projectile right there. Right there. The intact projectile. Your Honor, may I just publish these to the jury? Yeah. And this is State's Exhibit Number. 57, maybe. Okay. Can you tell that, what that is? That is the full projectile with no, with, um, it's, it's been deformed, but the other part was part of the jacket, but that's the, from photograph, here's be the full projectile that we collected. And it's on the, you'll see also the keyboard and all that. Okay. Here we go, that one's much better. And did you collect these items? Yes, ma'am. And what did you do with these items? They were also packaged, photographed, packaged, and submitted to the crime lab for comparison. Okay. Um, Your Honor, may I publish these to the jury? Yes, ma'am. May I approach the witness? Yes, Showing you what's been previously marked as states exhibit 212 and 213. So I'm ask you what these items are. Okay, the one. State exhibit 212 is listed as a projectile. Um, Okay, yeah, that's the 
spin. Okay, so five was this is the projectile, this is the projectile that we collected. Which exhibit? Uh, That's exhibit, exhibit number. I'm sorry, state's exhibit two two one two. Just list on ours for number five. Yeah, we would just speak to Met State's exhibit two twelve. Mr. Doug Carr, any objection? No, sir, Your Honor. Submitted. And um, we use the same in uh, two thirteen. And while he's doing that, Your Honor, may I publish this to the jury? Yes, ma'am. That's the um, state's exhibit 213. It's listed on the packaging as the fragment we collected. It's a small fragment of the metal from the projectile. Okay. That's very small. So be careful with that. Would this have, oh, you're on at this time, we would see the state's exhibit number 213. Any objection? No, sir. These items. Uh, would they have actually been the object that would have passed through the body of Alana Callahan? Yes, ma'am. And you're a man post this to the jury as well? Yes, ma'am. What caused it to pass to occur? Um, it's just as it meets resistance, it's <laughs> pieces can shear off or deflect off depending on when it strikes an object or... In this particular case, were you able to determine what the, the projectile struck that caused it to become a fragment, or caused a fragment to? It did. Well, it was, no, it struck the um, the um, the desktop was struck. Another part of the desktop plus Alana and skull and jawbone, or uh, jawbone, all that different bone stuff. Any point of that, it could have done off, including off the um, the desktop. There was impact mark. In fact, a few impact marks on there. So at some point. It, Fragment it off. And um, let's try this one more time. What is? Okay, that's a. Um, there was a mark right there on the front edge. Of where the monitor was, um, and then a impact mark. So it's an impact mark on the front edge, and then one in the keyboard shelf below it. What's so the, an impact mark? It's where the um, projectile had struck the edge and continued through, and then struck into the um, the, the keyboard shelf. So the projectile struck the ed front edge and continued down, striking the other part. Yeah, would this have occurred before or after Alana was struck by the bullet? Afterwards. State so exhibit number 60, what are you documenting in this photograph? That's just a close-up of the mark on the front edge of the, where the, where the, of the shelf where yep. the projectiles went through. And why are you measuring it? Um, we photograph things like that with a scale for in case we need reconstruction or anything needs to be done, also to give perspective on the size. Okay, and what is the size in this particular? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a, those are um, centimeters and millimeters, so... And did you perform any type of shooting incident reconstruction in this case? We, um, I determined using some rods and the trajectory of where it went through that edge and into the um, shelf below it where it struck that. I used um, some rods to determine the re re basically reverse trajectory of where the round had traveled. Okay. State's exhibit number 63. Yeah. What is this? This is the um, this is right there is the rod. Um, it goes through the edge of where the impact where the round had impacted the front of the shelf and where it struck the shelf below it. Um, we had been careful to make sure we hadn't moved the keyboard so we can get a location of that trajectory. Okay. And so, based upon your calculations, where would the shooter have had to be standing when the projectile was fired from the firearm? He would have had to been standing behind her, um, or to the rear of her, or in, in the, toward the kitchen area, I mean toward the dining area, but right behind the chair of that area. State's exhibit number 64. Yeah. 
that's just a uh, another photograph of the rod and the uh, its location in reference to the impact on the front of the shelf and into the lower shelf. And after, this is State Exhibit number 65, after the keyboard is moved, what is this depicting? No, that was just uh, another, well the keyboard's moved but not the shelf, it was just showing the where it struck, this is the, the other impact mark in the lower shelf, and again it's through that as it grazed the edge, the front edge of the upper shelf. Okay. So basically, I mean, the only way that there could have been a mark here and here, right there, yeah, they were, would be they the were, downward motion. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma downward, and they were, um, I mean, the path was consistent right through one into the other. It's exhibit number 67. That's just a, um, again, a photograph of the, the angle with the rod right there. Um, that's actually, I'm holding the, the rod to make sure it stays where it is. My, one of the people working with me photographs it for showing the angle and um, down through. That's after, and you'll notice this chair has been replaced to give us perspective of where, if someone was sitting in the chair. Okay. Stacey's exhibit number 70, what is this angle? This is a photograph from the place of your desk to show us that there was a, um, what says it starts? Okay, um, showing the angle again. Oh, don't know what I did, sorry. <laughs> um, straight down there was a slight, very slight um, from this angle as, project, as the projectile traveled from right to left, but very slight with a few degrees, and the downward angle. Just point out the rod just for clarity. Oh. Okay. I'm, let's start right here. There, okay. and then up there. All right, so this would have been looking directly at the monitor. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thanks. Regarding that angle, we also we did pull a um, an angle of that off of the off the horizontal. Um, there was a 55 degree angle off the horizontal for that trajectory of that rod. Okay, and what is this depicting at this point? That's a photograph of the chair in its original location before it was moved, um, with the um, back glass door there, the chair, um, the computers over to the left here, the computer desk. Um, and blood on the ground. Okay, if you would point out where the gun is, the, I mean the blood is. There's blood there, a little bit there. Okay. Hold on. What is, if you can even tell, What is this depicting? Okay. This is the uh, photograph of the rear glass door and the curtains that were hanging in front of the door, and there was a blood swipe um, dislocation. Okay, what is a blood swipe? A swipe is when you have a bloody object that's traveling across a non-bloody object and there's a transfer, as opposed to a smear is when you have blood on a surface and you rub up against it or something rubs up against it and smears the blood. A swipe is transfer of a bloody surface, something with blood on it that's going across a surface didn't have it as it transfers. State's exhibit number 75. Okay, this is also photographed. Um, this is the handle on the sliding glass door. Um, and this is the, the blood swipe right there. And it's exhibit number 77. What is this depicting? 
can you tell? <laughs> this is the, well, the chair, um, and the, without seeing the actual photograph, that I need to see the actual photograph. Okay, I can't verify with that. Maybe the lights for a second, John. Yeah. Just this one. Thank you. Okay, yeah, that's okay. Um, yeah, there's the, the chair, and then on the ground there's a, a bone fragment or a tooth at that point. Point to the bone fragment. Up there. Okay. And, and there's also blood down here. I said... All right, state's exhibit number 79. Yeah, there's the close-up of the bone fragment. We, we photograph the scene. We normally photograph far away. We show establishing, show relationship between objects, and then we'll try to show a close-up with or, and in many cases, without a scale of the object. How many bone fragments or teeth did you collect in this particular um, location? There was two teeth that were recovered, one from the floor, one from the desk. Um, from the floor, we listed as bone fragments. There were some very, very small fragments, and then that one, which was a little bit larger. Um, so, so two teeth, and um, we listed just miscellaneous bone fragments, just a few small and one of that size. Okay. And what is this? Can you tell what this is? Okay, there's the chair again, the curtain. And that's the tooth from the floor. Okay. This is what, yeah. And is that the chair in the position that you originally? Yes, ma'am. This is before we moved anything. All right. What is this? Uh, that's there's blood on the chair. State's exhibit number eighty four. What is this? There was um, hair also on the chair on the seat of the chair. Um, with blood, with the blood there, and there's hair there. Okay. That's on the seat of the chair. State's exhibit number 87. That's um, one of the teeth we've collected. State's exhibit number 89. Let's see. Can you tell what this is depicting? Well, this is the um, the back the, the back door up here. Um, this is the rug that was on the floor. There's blood. There's blood throughout the the flooring there. Exhibit number 92. Okay, this is um, out the back door. There's a little wooden deck thing, and there's there's blood across there, all throughout there. And just generalized. Yeah, just, I mean, there's large uh, swipe there, some there, some here. I mean, just there's blood just all the way out, out through there. Okay. And that, again, was more blood swipe, not pooling blood or drops the swipe. What happens to, um, and I'm done, well, for now. What happens to items such as the projectile or the fragment or the casing after you um, take it to the, I mean, what is the purpose you take it to the crime lab for? Um, we submit it to the crime lab for them to do um, firearms testings, in this case, with the, with the weapon, the projectile, the casing, to compare if the, um, if the projectile was fired from that weapon or a different weapon or if the, the casing, um, because the projectile gets markings from as it goes through the barrel. Um, and then the projectile will get indentions from the firing pin and also extractor marks. So they'll compare all the markings to determine if that casing or that projectile was fired from that weapon or, or not. 
And did you also have the occasion in this case to photograph any of the defendant's clothing or shoes? Um, while I was um, at the scene originally, um, outside of the video and everything, I was advised that um, that, that, um, that he was going to be um, going to the sheriff's office, him and um, Alana's sister. And um, they had blood on them. So at that point, I went over and began and photographed them at that point to document any blood or anything that may have been on them or... Um, and Your Honor, at this time I would just ask to approach the witness. Yes, ma'am. We went to previously marked as State's Exhibit Number 93 and 99. 93 through 99, excuse me. And ask you, do you recognize those objects? Yes, ma'am. I'm familiar with these photographs. These are uh, photographs of the clothing that. Um, was collected from the defendant and was turned over to me, and we um, then um, photographed it in our lab, um, in our office, to, to document. Thank you. And at this time, you're on a state with just seat to exhibit 93 through 99 inclusive. Any objection? No, sir. Thank you. They're admitted without objection. Your Honor, may I publish state exhibit 94 to the jury? Yes, ma'am. And I'm showing them what's been previously marked the state exhibit 94 and admitted. Why is this photograph significant, or why did you take this? Well, I photographed the uh, footwear patterns, um, I mean the soles of the shoes for any tread patterns, um, and also dirt and anything else that may end up being important. Your Honor, may I also publish to the jury of states exhibit 97 and 98? Yes, ma'am. Why are these photographs significant? There was um, blood on the clothing, on his clothing. Um, and so as I photographed it to document where the blood was, where it wasn't. This time I have no further questions of this witness. Thank you, Ms. Tunker. Cross examine. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Sergeant Summers. You found a live shell in one of the bedrooms, is that yes, correct? And that was in one of the children's bedrooms, not yep. the ma not the master bedroom. Yes, ma'am. And it was actually in one of the girls' bedrooms. Yes, ma'am. And was that uh, projectile sent to the GBI crime lab? No, ma'am, it was not. Okay. Um, and when you were looking in the, the parents' bedroom, you found a, I think what you referred to as a long gun. A rifle, yes, ma'am. Okay, a rifle in the corner. Yes, ma'am. Just laying up against the corner. Yes, ma'am. The, the room. Um, and when you first made entrance into the, the parents' bedroom, was the door locked the bedroom door was it locked? No, ma'am. Was it closed? Uh, do not recall it being closed. But okay. Um, and in the time that you have had training in crime scene reconstruction and and projectile path reconstruction, did you have any classes on the physics of bullets? Anything on the, the science of how they would, you know, the trajectories, et cetera? Yes, ma'am. We did cover trajectories okay. and determine trajectories. So did you, in creating this and using the rod to recreate the path, the rod doesn't take into account the changes in momentum of the bullet in going through a skull? No, ma'am. It doesn't take into account the changes in the angle of the bullet going through the skull? Uh, you don't make deflection or yeah. yeah. It, no, it doesn't take into account any of those things. It doesn't no, take into account the change in velocity that might happen no, by coming up against another object. <clears throat> so the angle that you recreated was actually just the angle from the exit wound to the desk. Yes, ma'am. And do, cannot necessarily be extrapolated to the where the the entrance wound happened. When compared with the entry and exit wound, 
Um, if there's a strong deviation, you, it, it can be visible during the post-mortem by the medical examiner. Um, or, like I said, there it can be deflection, but normally significant can be tailed. So it can okay. be extrapolated together. Okay, but uh, and, but the part that you recreated is just from the exit wound to the desk. Yes, ma'am. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, thank you. In your experience in training in crime scene, um, or specifically in shooting incident reconstruction, have you ever seen a bullet go in someone's head and then go to the right? I've seen them deflect off, um, um, but... So I have seen them deflect off off of bone, depending on the type of round, um, where it strikes, and things like that. But you know, you said you look at the totality of of everything. Where it came through, was it on a straight path as it came through? Was there a strong deviation then? Because you would see it. Okay. Does that Good. make sense? Okay. Thank you. Anything further, Ms. Dunkar? No, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You step down. Thank you, sir. Tim Burnley. Columbia County Sheriff's Office. Thank you, sir. Please answer counsel's questions, Madam DA. Thank you. Um, investigator, where are you employed? Columbia County Sheriff's Office. And how are you employed at the Sheriff's Office? Crime scene investigator. And were you um, assigned to that same division in January of 2011? I was. Um, as um, a crime scene investigator, what are your primary responsibilities and duties? Um, document scenes, examine them, and collect evidence from scenes. Did you have the occasion um, in January of 2011, specifically on the 31st, to become involved in the investigation of the murder of Alana Callahan? I did. And um, at what point did you become involved in that investigation? Uh, I received a call from my supervisor, and he apparently had received a call from Roll Patrol deputies um, that he needed to come to the scene, and he contacted me and requested I respond. Okay. So um, do you know what the time and date was that you would have gone to the scene? Um, I believe the exact time I got the call was uh, 12 minutes after 4 in the afternoon. Okay. Um, Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Please, ma'am. Look at these exhibits and just tell me if you identify them. Your Honor, these are states. I'm showing him states exhibit 100 through 123. Thank you, ma'am. I did. Um, are they fair, fairly and accurately depicting the scene as you recall it from that day? Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, the state would seek the state exhibit 100 through 123. Please. Any objection? No, sir, Your Honor. Thank you. They're admitted. Do the lights, Your Honor. Yes, ma'am. State's Exhibit 100, what is that? That is the front of 1159 Miles Road. State's Exhibit 102, what is this? That's the right side of the front of the residence, shooting back towards the backyard. Six exhibit 104. That is on the right side of the residence, shooting back towards the back. Okay. What is this object right here? Uh, that's the vehicle that was parked in the backyard. Okay. At that point, had it been moved by anyone, to your knowledge? No, ma'am, it had not. States Exhibit 105. What is this? This is another shot of the backyard, shooting from the right side of the residence. Okay. And States Exhibit 106. It's in the back right corner, uh, looking back towards the back porch and the back landing. Okay. States Exhibit 109. This is from the backyard, looking back towards the front, and also with the back landing. Okay. <coughs> States Exhibit 112. Back of the residence.
State's Exhibit 115. That's going to be the back porch, the back landing of the residence. And what is the significance of this photograph? Um, there was blood found on the back porch. And can you identify the areas where blood was found? Uh, the majority of it was found actually on the landing itself and then on the um, next to the top step. State's exhibit number 18, I mean 118, excuse me. What is that? That's the back landing again. Can we identify the, the blood at that point? The blood on that, on that object? Can I identify it on here? Yeah, if you can just circle it on the okay. screen, it'll it's, show up. Uh, this is a large amount right here and right here. Six is at 121. Zoom in for a second. What is this object right here? Uh, it's a sock. Exhibit 123. What is that? That's a closer image of the sock. What? The color's off. I'm not, Your Honor, if we could turn the lights on for just one second. May I publish this to the jury? Yes, ma'am. What was the significance of this sock, investigator? Uh, that sock was found, and it matched a single sock that the victim was wearing. And by way of stipulation, the state would take the state's exhibit 124 through 142. Is that correct, Mr. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, ma'am. 124 through 142 are admitted pursuant to the stipulation. And if we could do the lights again, I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. What is this area depicting? Uh, this is from the side of the backyard. I'm kind of behind where that truck is back towards the house and I'm shooting back over towards where the body was found. Okay. State's Exhibit 125. What is that? That's a distant shot of the body. Okay. And can you identify in this picture where the body is? Yes, ma'am. If you would just circle it with, yeah, thanks. One twenty six. What is this depicting? This is drag marks in the dirt and in the leaves leading from the back landing. And one twenty seven. That's closer up to the drag marks and also blood that was found inside the drag marks. Okay. You would show the jury where the blood is. Exhibit 128. That's those further away shots of the drag marks. Okay. And 133. Specifically, where is the area? What what area is this? This is. Uh, just off where the victim's feet were, looking back towards the residence. Okay, and if you would just do with your finger the drag mark pattern. It, from where you can see it in the photograph where it begins, it's up here and it comes down. Okay, thank you.
takes this up at 140. That's the body. All right. And where is this in relation to that photograph that you just showed us? Where, where that mark ended is where this trail right here began, and the body was short distance down the trail. Okay. And what what type of trail was this? I mean, was this previously cleared? A previously cleared yes. trail? Did it appear that it had been traveled before? Right. That's correct. And 142. What is this depicting? This is an overhead shot of the body. And your honor, at this time, um, with the objection, I know from the defense, or, well, actually, we're, we're seeking to amend a stipulation, actually, 143 through 157, 160, 162, and 163. Right. And Your Honor, we would just like to renew our objection from previously, pre previous this morning. Thank you. So, uh, 150, give me the numbers again, please. It's um, 143 through 157. All right, 143 through 157. Yes, sir. And there were objections, were not to all of those. No, no sir. It was 156 to 164. All right, so one, one, um, let me make sure I understand this. 150, tell me again. 143 to 157 is what is one And they're coming in pursuant to stipulation. All the 56. Uh, to 155, pursuant yes. to stipulation. Up to 155. And 156 and 157 are coming in over objection. Yes, sir. Thank you. And then we're also seeking to admit State's Exhibit 160, 162, and 163. Which... She and we, would, we also would like to renew our objection as to those photos as well. But not to the authenticity of them. No, Thank sir. You. No, sir. We will stipulate to the authenticity. Thank you. And they're admitted over objection. What is the purpose? This is State's Exhibit 143. What is the purpose of this shot? Show what did appear to be the way that the victim was dragged. Okay, and why, what in that photograph or at that time was telling you that was the way that it, she was dragged? The dirt marks on the jeans. Okay. This is State's Exhibit 144. What is this? That was, that was a shoe impression. Okay, was the shoe impression, um, did it... Was it under the body? It was beside the body. Okay. And this is State's Exhibit 149. What is the significance of this picture? Uh, those are pictures of the hand, the blood on the hands. Okay. And, Your Honor, I might just have to publish these to the jury because the coloring is altered for some reason. Yes, ma'am. So if we could just turn the lights right on. Yes. May I publish this to the jury? Yes. Is there any dirt on the underside of her hands? I don't believe it was. And State's Exhibit 152, what are you doing in this photograph? What's the purpose of that photo? To show that the backside of the pants legs were didn't have the dirt on them from being dragged. And 
on State's Exhibit 153. Actually, I'll do 153 and 154 at the same time. What are the purpose of these photographs? Showing that one foot had a sock on it and the other one did not. And the uh, one, the sock that you found by the back uh, door matched this sock? That's correct. What is the purpose of this shot? So overall, the body. Were there any drag marks after her head? There was not. And Specifically, I want to ask you on 157 about this down here. What is that? That's where her head originally was. When you say originally was? She was actually, from what we understand, was rolled over by her sister. For what purpose? To try to do CPR. So the blood pooling, or the blood, what would, it, what would you call that? The blood would have been pooled right there at the original location where the body was left prior to being moved by our sister. Presumably she would have been face down. Correct. What is State's Exhibit 160? That's a shot of the face. Why is this photograph shown, or why is this taken? Just to get a close-up of the damage to the face, injuries. <laughs> is that the entrance or the exit wound? It's the exit wound. States Exhibit 162 and 163, what are these depicting? 163 is, that's going to be the, be the back side of the head okay. and her back. And then 162 is showing the back side of the pants, showing that there's no dirt back there other than where she was laying. It was not dragged. Did you also um, assist in the uh, documenting of the firearm retrieval? I did. And when did that actually occur? The actual measurements were taken the following morning. When, <laughs> when was the firearm located, in, I guess, in respect to the time that you would have arrived at the scene? Um, we arrived at the scene, it, like the, uh, I got the call at 412, and it was... I believe we left the scene around 3.30 that morning, probably around 2 o'clock is when we actually located the firearm. So several hours later. That's correct. And how did you <coughs> locate the firearm? Um, actually, one of our canine officers brought his dog out and doing a search of the area, the, the canine actually located the firearm. Way of stipulation or deceit, it meant states exhibit 165 to 186, and also, well, this I'm just through 186 at this point. So, so the getting number was what? 165. 155. 165. Okay, thank you. And man, that's the stipulation for the stunt car? Yes, sir. Thank you. 165 through 186 inclusive or and then in pursuant to the stipulation. Okay. 
Okay. <coughs> if we could um, turn the lights off, the colors don't really matter. This is State's Exhibit 165. What does this a photograph of? This is inside of the residence, looking out the back sliding glass door towards the backyard of the vehicle part of the backyard. Okay, and in relation to this photograph, where, um, if you could just point on the screen to the general location of where the firearm would have been located. The firearm would have been located back off this direction. Okay. This is exhibit 170. And I realize you probably can't see this, but there is a flag right here. It's, it's blue, I guess, but it's really orange. What is that put there for? That, flag? that was a marker that I used to mark the direction from the where I'd take my measurements from down to the location of the firearm. And say it's exhibit 177. This is orange and this is blue, just for reference. That's so correct. What is this? The orange, the top one right here, that's the marking flag, and it's actually by side a pair of latex gloves that we left there the night before, too, to help us in the daytime be able to locate it. Okay. So is the firearm still there or is it not there? It's not there. Your Honor, if we could turn the lights back on. This is State Exhibit 180. If you would examine that and tell me if you recognize that photograph. I do. And when is this photograph taken? This is immediately after the dog located on the where it thought the firearm was. Okay. And if I could publish this to the jury. Yes, please. Bye, So, was it immediately visible? Uh, if you stood at a certain angle, you could actually see part of the silver on the firearm. The stainless steel firearm, so. 183, what is that? That's after I started to uncover it. Okay. That's the grip on the firearm. May I publish this? Yes, Based on the foliage on top of the firearm, um, do you have any insight as to how, or if it could have been thrown to be in that location? It would have had to been covered up. Did you collect that firearm? I did. You're going to make a personal witness? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's been previously admitted into evidence as Exhibit 224. Um, do you recognize that? I do. And how do you recognize that? Uh, the serial number that was recorded that night when the firearm was found. Okay. Is that the same firearm? It is. Thank you. And Judge Mayer, briefly discovers this again to the jury. Yes, ma'am. When you collected the firearm, um, did you inspect it to see if it was safe? I did. And what was the uh, status of the firearm at that time? Um, that particular firearm has a safety, it's a decocking mechanism where if the hammer is pulled back, it's a switch that you flip on the side and it basically lets the hammer down. The hammer was in the back position and um, what I did, I dropped the magazine out of it and then manipulated the slide back and forth to render it safe. Okay, and was it loaded? It was. 
and was a round chambered. It was. Um, what did you do with those rounds? They were collected. I mean, impression witness. Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's been previously marked as State's Exhibit 209 and 210. I'll ask if you recognize this item. 